and your posture will be that you are an owner in this company. And how you say something will be just or more impactful than whatever it is that you say. And be excited. Because if you're excited, that rubs off on people. Rob, what was two? Did I miss one? Yeah. I remember two. Yeah. 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 Oh, affirm. Every 60 seconds, that's, that's a little aggressive. But affirming is um, when you're in the process of talking to somebody and they give you, you know, a yes. Remember, sales is a series of yeses. Your first yes is not, are you willing to do this business? Your first yes is, um, are you open to something that could change your life? Yes, I'm open to that. Yes. So that's your first yes. It's not, do you want to join V or do you want to start a business with V? Are, are you open to a side hustle? Yes. The point is, is you're getting them to say yes. And when you get them into the process of saying yes, as you're talking to them and as the conversation is going, just say, now, you've mentioned that you're open to a side hustle. That's reaffirming. So all you're doing is you're going back and reaffirming the yeses you've already got. And you can do that approximately every 60 seconds with that. Now, you don't reaffirm the same thing. But as you're going through, you can reaffirm every 60 seconds and still not feel uncomfortable. Um, the way you say something. OK. <laughs> Restate their question. Thank you for reading them for me. Restate their question. So when someone has a question, say, listen, that's a great question. Now, if I understand it correctly, what you're asking is this. If I understand you correctly, what you're asking is this. And you're reaffirming, or excuse me, you're restating their question. Because sometimes they may ask something that's slightly ambiguous, and you start answering a question, and it's not at all what they meant, and that annoys people. They also feel like you're dodging their question, when in reality you were answering what you thought they were asking. So it's OK to restate their questions, OK? Avoid using definitives. This is a big one, because remember, you're managing expectations. So if you say, you reach pay setter and you will make $1,000 a month, that's bull because some pay setters might make 200 a month. It just depends on how you get there and what your team dynamic looks like and where your customer points fall and whether or not you have enough personal customer points to open up all eight levels as opposed to just six levels or as opposed to four levels. So there's a lot of variables. So if you say a definitive statement, you look like an ass when they don't get what you just said. So don't use definitive statements like, oh, you're guaranteed to be successful. The only definitive statement we use in Veeve is that you're guaranteed to save some money over the utility because we have a lifetime savings guarantee and we automatically monitor it every year. That's why there's a little disclaimer below the levels, right? Got it. So don't use definitives. Put your best foot forward. Right. In sales, if you have... If you have, here's a perfect example. Your best foot forward is, our, our websites are live and they're awesome. That's leading with your best foot. We all, we're, even, we're still in pre-launch, but we already have websites that are live. Our company is led by a woman who is named in direct sales, uh, most influential women in all of direct sales, who was also a, uh, a chief, yeah, was also invited to the White House as an energy expert, was also a chief strategy officer for a publicly held company doing almost three quarters of a billion dollars. Also, those are, you're leading, I mean, Cammy is like one of our, she's our horse, I mean, she's her, lead with her, especially in a woman's environment, being a woman-led company is a, is a great asset for us. Regardless if she's a woman or not, that plays to some people's narrative. She's wicked smart. I don't care if she's smarter than most men I know. And definitely smarter than most women I know. She's just a smart freaking person. Lead with that. Lead with your strengths. <laughs> That's okay. What's the next one? Don't plant a negative. Here's a negative that you can plant. We, our websites are live. They're not working right right now. <laughs> 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 they don't work on Internet Explorer. <laughs> Hey, they don't work if you put www in front of them. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're planting a negative before that was ever even a question for them. You haven't even signed them up yet. Why are you talking about a negative on our website? Does that make sense? Don't plant the negative. Tell me you understand that or you don't understand yeah. that. Yeah. You never plant a negative. Put your best foot forward, sell on your best assets. Don't plant a negative. Address the concerns when they come with the appropriate responses. You don't lead or give them a negative to think about prior to them being sold on the business. And you can sometimes make a negative into a positive, such as instead of saying, ah, we don't have any products yet to sell to anybody. You want to get in on day one? This isn't even day one today yet. It's great, great, great. So let me, let me state if I understood what you just said. Even if something is could be presented as a negative, you turn it around and make it a positive. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I mean, you want a company that is in at, at this stage. What a blessing! You're in before the you're in before the masses even know about it. You're not saying we don't even have anything to sell yet, but. <laughs> You're just talking about the positive aspects, right? Did I skip one? Uh, yeah. Uh, sales requires a genuine connection. Is it the right order? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is eight. Sales requires a genuine connection. Don't try to sell too soon. Now that's different than pre-closing. Pre-closing you can do from a handshake. But don't try your sales process other than just your pre-close until you have established a rapport because that will have so much greater um, percentage of a close if you establish the rapport first. Now if I can just say one thing before we wrap up, before we get to the last thing. Um, if you're reaching out to people, social media is phenomenal. I have connection with people that I knew in my childhood that I've rekindled great relationships with. But please don't just go out and reach out to people that you haven't talked to for five years and your first initial reaction is you're just pitching them on the business. That is just the colossal worst thing you could do. Reach out, like some of their posts, make a list of the people that you want to reconnect with before you start pitching on the business. Because what you do is you go on, you like their posts, you make some comments, you engage in a conversation with them online, how you been, it's so good to see you, I'm so excited we've reconnected, or man, I just saw you pop up, I haven't seen some posts, shame on me, I haven't been on Facebook enough, or what? But I now I took some time and went to your post, and oh my goodness, you've had so much going on. How are things? How was little Jimmy's bar mitzvah? How was little Sarah's bat mitzvah? Whatever, right? You're spending your time reconnecting before. Well, what are you doing? Oh, I don't want to talk about me right now. Let's, you know, how's Sam's job going? That will win you points. What are you up to right now? Oh, I don't want to talk about me. Let's talk about you. Remember, go back to listening. Listen to understand first. You understand the hot buttons. You understand so that when you're when you go into your sales mode, you're doing it appropriately. All right. Uh, don't make blah, 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 blah. Oh. <laughs> Don't make crap up. If you don't know the answer, don't make up an answer. I'll get back to you. That's a great question. I haven't heard that answer. I haven't heard that question yet. Or that question has never been asked of me at this point. Or when I've been to every training that our company's done so far. That's never been brought up. You're thinking outside the box. You're brilliant for even thinking of that that no one else has thought of. I'm going to have to get back to you. Give me 48 hours to get a response, and then I'll come back to you. And then you mark in your calendar on 24 hours. If I told him 48, at 24 hours, mark an alarm on your phone, follow up with Sam about his question about this. Because then when you follow up in 24 hours, you can say, hey, Sam, I got your answer. Or, hey, Sam. I don't have your answer yet. I told you I'd give you 48 hours, but I'm still working on it. I'll be back to you tomorrow. So you let them know that you're on their, they're on your mind, you're in active engagement, and you're still keeping them connected that it's important what they ask. That all establishes trust. And finally, don't take the outcome personal or personal. <clears throat> I, there's a book, uh, I can't remember, maybe you'll know. Um, farming for no's or getting to know, getting to know, getting to and all. Yeah, is getting that what it is? Yeah. There might be another one because that doesn't sound familiar. But um, have you read that? Is it a good book? Yeah. Okay. So 
the concept was presented at, at other companies uh, a couple years ago. Okay, getting to know. The the point is, is think about it this way: your your sifters and sorters. As salespeople, you're sifting and sorting. Write on your paper four SWs in a row. SW, 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 SW. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Do not take somebody's decision to drastically improve their life or to not drastically improve their life as a personal assault on you. You need to be completely unemotional. And that goes both ways, by the way. Think about it this way. You're working with a prospect and they finally tell you yes and you sign them up and you call it, ah, I just signed up and yeah, woo! That's just as bad as he told me no. Why? Because you're too emotionally engaged in the process. You're taking their response <laughs> to change their life for the better or not change their life at all as a personal, um, not that, a personal achievement. There's a word. A front, a front works good. You're taking it as a personal affront. Um, That, that it's somehow something to do with you. It doesn't. Don't take their, don't take a no personally. You're sifting and sorting. It's like opening a bag of M&Ms and you only want to eat the blues. <laughs> Whoever wants to do that. But you only want to eat the blues. Are you offended when you pull a brown out of the M&M wrapper? No, it's just not what you're looking for. Irrelevant. It has nothing to do with you. Am I, I pulled the brown out again! <laughs> Dang it! Where's the brown out? <laughs> it's just, all you're doing is you're looking for people who are looking for opportunity. They're looking for change. They're looking for a vehicle that will get them to their level of success. Leaf is that vehicle. I promise it is. This is a phenomenal business. <clears throat> I love you guys. We're done.